Alright, what's going on everyone, and welcome to the series in which I introduce you to all of the most powerful competitive decks in the modern format. The goal here isn't to give exact deck lists as those change constantly, but rather just to give you a brief overview of how the deck works in case you're new to the format. And today we're talking about Living End, and before we get into this I need to make crystal clear that this deck is very similar to Dredge in that it can be found at the top of the metagame one week and completely out of the metagame the next. This deck is very temperamental. It can surge depending on the meta and then be completely unplayable in the next one. So it is a good deck. It is a competitive deck. It is a top tier deck that you will play against, but it's dangerous to build this as your only deck as it does go months at a time being kind of unplayable sometimes. So just be aware of that. So how does this deck work? First off, we have Living End. This is the card that the deck's built around, and you'll notice that it doesn't have a mana cost because the only way to cast this is by suspending it. Well, sort of. So basically, you pay for, gets three time counters, and three turns later, so turn seven-ish, you basically put all creature cards and graveyards into the battlefield, and all creatures on the battlefield go to the graveyard. You just swap them. But the trick to this deck is it's cascading into this with Violent Outburst and Shardless Agent. So these have Cascade, which means when you cast them, you reveal cards off the top of your deck until you hit a card with a lower mana cost, and then you can cast that card for free. And the trick here is there are no cards in this deck that cost two or less. So when you cast these cards, there is only one card in the deck that you can possibly hit, and that's a Living End. So you do not have to suspend a Living End. You are paying three for one of these cards, and you have eight of them. You have four of each, so you have eight Living Ends in your deck, basically. You cast them, you cascade into Living End, and then you swap. You swap all graveyard creatures with all creatures than play. But what's the point of that? And once again, we have a, a trick here because we're just cycling creatures. We have Curator of Mysteries, Striped Riverwinder, Street Wraith. All of these have cycling. In Street Wraith, it's even free to cycle. Well, you have to pay two life, but you don't have to pay mana. So what you're doing is you're cycling these, right? You cycle, cycle, cycle. Not only does this fill your graveyard, but you draw a card, right? Cycling, you discard the card, and you draw another one. So basically, you're just churning through your deck. You're cycling, 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 cycle a Street Wraith, cycle a River Winder for one, turn two, maybe you cycle two or three more creatures. You're just cycling. That's going to draw you into a Cascade spell, which you then cast, Cascade into Living End, and then bring back all of the creatures that you cycled. And remember that Living End is basically sort of a board sweeper because it forces everyone to sacrifice their creatures and since you're not interacting the opponent isn't going to have any creatures in their graveyard right so basically for the first couple turns if you're playing against an aggro deck they're going to beat you down a little bit but you're going to be cycling 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 and then you're going to wipe the board and put who knows a 10 15 20 power on the battlefield by cascading into living end and bringing back all these cyclers and there's more too by the way there's there's architect Hex of Will, there's Waker of Waves, there's Grief, kind of. So uh, once again, these all just have cycling, sort of. Architects of Will has cycling also when it comes into play. You get to look at the top of your opponent's deck and maybe make sure they're not going to draw a board sweeper for a couple turns. Waker of Waves will make all your opponent's creatures smaller. It's also a 7-7 that comes back with Living End. And it doesn't have cycling, but you discard it and then you look at the top two cards, put one into your hand, put one into your graveyard. So it's actually better than cycling. And Grief is technically a hand disruption spell. You have to exile a black card and then you can play it uh, sort of like a Thoughtseize or an Inquisition of Kozilek. But um, you evoke it technically and then it goes into the graveyard. So it comes back and it's a 32 with Menace. The deck also usually plays Brazen Borrower. This is just interaction because the deck can't play two drops or any two mana value spell. It plays Brazen Borrower, which technically, technically costs three, but it has the Petty Theft two mana bounce something which is just interaction basically so it allows you to have an interactive spell but not something that interferes with cascade
Shade, which is critical for how the deck works. And then the deck always plays Force of Negation. So this, uh, first off, it's a counter spell. So it allows you to counter board sweepers and stuff like that because that's very dangerous for you. But it has the additional benefit in that it can be cast without mana. If you cast that on your opponent's turn, you can exile a blue card and counter something without having to spend mana. And what that allows you to do is Violent Outburst as an instant. So if you're playing against a deck with counter spells and, and board sweepers and stuff, you can cascade at instant speed at the end of the opponent's turn and have a counter spell up with Force of Negation for their counter spell or a board sweeper or whatever. And that's uh, that's the whole deck. It's very simple, right? It is Living End, it is Violent Outburst to cascade into Living End, and then it's a pile of cycling creatures to cycle and churn through your deck to find a cascade spell and then reanimate into an army when your opponent has an empty board. So it's very simple, right? Very one dimensional. It does one thing and one thing only. So much like Dredge, this deck is very vulnerable to graveyard hate. If the opponent can just prevent your stuff from ever hitting the graveyard, then the deck stops working. So it's the type of deck that cannot win when people are playing Graveyard Hate in their sideboard. So this deck dies out for months at a time, but over time when people don't play against decks like Living End or Dredge, you no, know, th these decks die out for months at a time. So people start taking their Graveyard Hate out of their sideboard. And then all of a sudden decks like Living End and Dredge just surge into the metagame. They, they have obscene win rates because they're absolutely crazy decks. And then everyone's like, oh crap, I forgot about that deck. I should probably put my, my graveyard hate back in my sideboard and then these decks die out again. So it's important to keep that in mind if you're going to build this deck, especially if you're going to a small FNM. I don't recommend decks like this, this and Dredge, if it's going to be the only deck you play because it's very easy to hate the deck out with sideboard cards. Also keep in mind that decks are subject to change over time. So I will leave links to the metagame pages of various websites below so you can see the most up-to-date decks. Also, if you like this video and want to see more like it, I have an entire playlist dedicated to these modern deck guides, and I will also leave a link to that in the description as well as on the end screen that you're about to see. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. I hope that was useful, and I will see you in the next one.